The crew on the TV show Star Trek featured some amazing technology. Captain Kirk and Spock had a universal translator that let them talk to aliens. Dr. McCoy used a tricorder to make his medical diagnosis. And the crew of the Enterprise had a replicator, a device that was able to instantly produce any tool, food, or medicine on demand. Today, thanks to the advances in 3D printing technology, millions of us now have access to our very own replicators. The explosive growth in 3D printing and its widespread use in everything from medical devices and pharmaceuticals to consumer products and candy bars presents unique challenges for our clients and the insurance industry. This podcast will explain how 3D printers work, what they can do, and some of the legal and regulatory challenge they pose. Let's start with looking at how 3D printers work. Instead of starting with a block of material and cutting away from it, a 3D printer actually builds the object from the ground up by adding thin slices of material. Think of it as a robotic arm with a hot glue gun. But instead of squeezing out glue, it squeezes out plastic, metal, carbon fiber, sugar, chocolate, and even living cells. The industrial term for 3D printing is additive printing, or rapid prototyping. Unlike traditional printing, the 3D process does not cover flat paper surfaces with a single layer of dots. Instead, it deposits layers of material on top of one another to create a 3D object. The amount of material being dispensed, the rotation of the surface on which the object is being printed, and the design of the object are all controlled by software. So you can download design plans from the web, load the file into a 3D printer, and voila, off you go. So if you need a tie, just load a silk cartridge, choose a design, punch a button, and tie your Windsor knot. Thinking of starting your own business? Then print hundreds or even thousands of whatever you want to sell, and you're ready to open a storefront or run a mail order business. Major manufacturers such as GE, Auric, and Boeing all use 3D printers in their operations because they cut lead time and costs. The comedian Jay Leno used a 3D printer to make no longer in stock replacement parts for his collection of classic cars. One analyst predicts that the 3D industry will grow by 25% annually to nearly $11 billion by 2021. And many believe that 3D printers will shatter long-standing business models and forever change global trade and supply chain logistics. For instance, companies may no longer need to offshore their manufacturing operations and point-of-care manufacturing will become routine in hospitals, which will use 3D printers to create customized devices for patients. Where does Corso see 3D printing having the biggest impact? Toys. 3D printers have the ability to change the way our children create and play, but there are significant risks. Children are our most vulnerable population, Presently, most countries have strict regulatory requirements that mandate warnings such as small parts, choking hazard, are not suitable for children under the age of three. 3D printing has the potential to revolutionize food production by boosting culinary creativity, food sustainability, and nutritional customization. Everyday foods such as pasta and candy can now be printed, which would have life-saving implications for hunger-stricken populations around the world. In 2013, a New York Times reporter wrote about how he used a 3D printer to print an entire meal, including the forks and the wine glasses. Medical science and research is another sector that is benefiting from 3D printing. Layers of living cells can now be deposited onto a gel medium and slowly built up to form 3D structures. This is called bioprinting, and someday 
It may allow us to create human tissues, organs, blood vessels, and artificial limbs. 3D printers can lower costs and improve patient outcomes. The aerospace and the automotive industry have been using 3D technology for years. Boeing manufactured 22,000 3D components last year. And by 2020, GE Aviation expects to manufacture 100,000 components via 3D. Consumer products, such as cosmetics, will soon be available for you to print at home. At least one company has developed a 3D printer intended for retail sale that will allow consumers to choose a color pigment and then print that color into blush, eyeshadow, lip gloss, or any other type of makeup. What are some of the challenges associated with 3D printing? Well, the first is intellectual property rights. As 3D printing becomes more widespread, we will see our clients having to defend and prosecute more patent, trademark, and copyright infringement cases. The purpose of 3D printing is to print a product from a single digital file that is an exact replica of an original design, so it can easily be used for counterfeiting products. You can find hundreds of websites that illegally host 3D printing files that will make exact replicas of popular products such as Star Wars and Disney figurines. Regulations. Companies using 3D printers need to be aware of evolving regulations governing what can and cannot be printed. For example, the American Food and Drug Administration has already approved more than 90 different 3D printed medical devices. And in May of 2016, the FDA issued draft guidelines for 3D design, manufacturing, and device testing. The Consumer Product Safety Commission has not yet issued any rules on 3D printed products, but when they do, we suspect they will include mandates on ingredient quality and proper labeling. Perhaps the most important unanswered question, who will pay when something goes wrong? It is very possible plaintiffs may find it very difficult to win a product liability lawsuit involving a 3D printed product. Let's imagine you buy a bike helmet from a neighbor who printed it on his 3D printer. The helmet falls apart and you injure your head. Who are you going to sue? The first and most obvious potential defendant would be your neighbor, the hobbyist inventor who actually manufactured and sold the defective product. However, strict product liability law applies only to commercial sellers which is defined as those engaged in the business of selling or distributing products. Occasional vendors, such as a child who sells tainted lemonade or a home woodworker who sells a defective chair, are not strictly liable. A second potential defendant would be the company that manufactured the 3D printer. But again, there are some serious obstacles on the road to recovery. It is not enough for you to prove that the printer made a defective product. You're going to have to prove that the printer itself was defective. If you cannot prove this, your product liability suit is likely a non-starter. The third possible defendant is, of course, the digital designer, the programmer who wrote the code that was fed into the printer to create the helmet. But here, too, there are obstacles. Remember. Product liability law applies only to the sale of products. A product is defined as a tangible property. It's something you can touch and feel. It's manufactured and it's sold. But computer code is intangible property. You can't touch it or feel it. It is basically just lines of code out in cyberspace. While we don't have a court decision on the issue of whether a 3D printer software is a product, we do have many decisions where courts ruled that the information in charts, books, and maps is intangible personal property. So the bike helmet software may be deemed a service, not a product, and another party in the 3D supply chain would avoid liability. I don't pretend to know the answers to all these questions, and a full discussion of all of the issues is well beyond this podcast. But what we do know 
is 3D printing is here, it's real, and it will continue to grow. So if you are a Star Trek fan, you will be happy to know we're getting closer to making the show's famous replicator a reality.